is there any characteristics or character traits that will cause a person to achieve nothing in an MLM? Yeah, people who aren't coachable and who don't treat it like a business. I, I said that earlier. I mean, if you're not coachable, I don't care if you're the smartest person in the world, the nicest person in the world, if you're reliable. I was one of these people, by the way. I would, I, when I first started, I didn't want to hear it. I was, I came from a sales background. I could figure it out. I could make a presentation. I was going to do it the way I wanted to do it. And you weren't going to tell me anything differently, you know? So I had, you know, and I'm not, bra I'm not bragging about myself at all, but I, I, I had a lot of those characteristics that, you know, I read motivational books. I read books by Dale Carnegie and Napoleon Hill, thinking grow rich, all that stuff. I was always someone who wanted to achieve, but I wasn't coachable. And I did treat it like a business. So remember the two parts, coachable and treat it like a business. I treated it like a business. I worked very hard, but I just didn't want to take any, um, even though my sponsor really didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> he could have known what he was doing. I wasn't going to listen to him anyway. All right. I just went out and did. If you're coachable and you don't and you, you don't treat it like a business, that's not, you, you can't fix that. You just have to let those people go, even if they have the other characteristics. That's a great question, Adriana. How long does it take to build a con uh, consumer uh, family? It depends. I mean, you know, it, it depends on a lot of things. Uh, how hard you work, right? I mean, someone working 10 hours a day is different than someone working 10 minutes a day. I mean, obviously, you're going to achieve, especially if you're doing the right things, if you're working harder and longer, you're going to get there quicker. Okay. Um, what we just talked about. How much credibility and influence with your peers do you have? You know, I mean, if people don't know you, like you and trust you and, and you know, you, 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 no matter what you say, people aren't going to listen to you. You're going to, you're going to have a hard time. All right. Um, um, how, how select, how selective are you in picking your people, right? The, the more selective you are, the people that you bring in that have mo mo most of those characteristics that I just talked about, all right, they already have those skill sets. You teach them the system, do this, do that, send them the company. They have the skill sets. They're reliable, good communication skills. They're industrious. They have credibility. To the degree that you're selective, you'll grow a heck of a lot faster because those people will do it with or without you. I mean, they don't care. Like when you pick the right people, and they start building the business and they and they get it. If you quit the business, that they're not they're not gonna quit the business. Like maybe you want to retire and go over to Italy and open up a coffee shop or something like that. Just because you leave the business doesn't mean they're gonna leave the business because that's not what people like that do. They typically keep on working. They might miss you and say, Oh, geez, yeah, I'm gonna miss working with you, but they continue to work. And that's what you want in network marketing. You want to build that solid foundation, napkin presentation number four. You want to build that foundation. You want to build it deep with the right people. And once you go three levels deep with the right people, that building starts coming out of the ground. And the larger, you want to think of your building as the biggest skyscraper you can ever imagine. And the larger the skyscraper, the larger your, it's analogous to the, your, your income, the larger the potential income. And the bigger the skyscraper, the better foundation you have to build. It's one thing, you know, building a foundation so you can make $1,000 a month. It's a whole nother thing, building a foundation, if you want to make $100,000 a month. Okay? Okay, you, they're, 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 two different, they're two different things, and that's for another, uh, another day. But does that answer your question, Adriana? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I have a little bit... Um expanding that in next question can you stop working after five years when you have achieved satisfactory income and build four levels and hope that the group will develop on its own or do you have to constantly sponsor because people also quit if you uh, need to sponsor constantly does uh, the intensity of sponsorship Decrease over time, or should you always be uh, sh should always be the same amount of sponsorship? Yeah, my well, the answer to that question, I sort of already answered that question, you know, mm -hmm. but I'll expand on a little bit. You know, the the diet network marketing is like uh, it's like it's your, it's your it's your building a huge pipeline, 
and your products and services are going through your, your pipeline. And the more products and services that go through that pipeline, the more income you'll earn in network marketing. So the diameter of your pipeline, if you want a little pipeline, right? Or if you want a big pipeline, I think everybody would rather have a big pipeline, right? The diameter of your pipeline is dependent on the mentality of your key people. You follow me on that? Okay, so let's go back to being selective. People with a great track record, right? Because people are very predictable. They have a great track record as a missionary and the timing is right for them to do our business. I can almost guarantee you they can build anything they want in network marketing, all right? And if they have those other characteristics, warm, open, easy to talk to, industrious, but you know all that stuff that I talked about, all right? So the answer to your question is, um, and if you look at, uh, what is it, napkin presentation? Um, I should know this. I think it's napkin presentation number seven. Hold on, let me make sure I'm not telling you wrong here. Napkin presentation number seven, where to spend your time. Let me share my screen with you. I think I have, yeah, there it is. Chapter eight, napkin presentation number seven. You know, uh, you can read it on your own, but basically, you know, when you first, when you first get involved in network marketing, 100% of the time should be spent sponsoring people. You're looking for people who want to own their life. And then as you start sponsoring those people and you work with them over a period of time, right? I mean, you know, I've said it time and time again, you're looking for three to five to seven serious people who are coachable and treat it like a business who want to own their life. Okay. And as you find those people, the time you spend prospecting goes down because you have those people and you're going to be working with them and helping them what? Duplicate, right? So as you can see in this graph, time goes down and this goes out, what? It looks like seven months and whatever the amount of time. I mean, it might, if it takes you, let's just say, it just we'll choose the graph. Let's just say it takes you seven, seven months. Let's just say it takes you uh, three months, uh, two months to find your first three. And then you have five people at the fourth month. And then by your seventh, seventh month, maybe you find another one or two. Okay. So you have five to seven people right here. You should be spending 98% of your time working with those key people down, down in their groups. Okay. You always want to spend, this is a little advanced. Okay. But once you get those key people, you're always better off. The deeper in your organization that you're that you're down there teaching and, and helping them sponsor people, the faster you'll grow. Because remember, like for example, um, on your let's just say on your eighth level, okay, let's just say um, you, you know your eighth level pays your seventh level, which pays your sixth level, which pays your fifth, which pays your fourth, which pay, okay, you get it. The people down here, if they're working really hard and earning a lot of money. That money is going up line. So these people up here are earning more money because the ones down here are working hard. You think that's going to get them excited, all right, when these people down here who are working really hard are sending money into their bank accounts? Do you think that's going to get them excited? Of course, it's going to get them excited. What do most people do in network marketing? They sponsor their best friend, right? And they're comfortable with their best friend. So they continue to work with their best friend. But as soon as their best friend, you help them sponsor someone, what you should be doing is not only helping your best friend, but working with their friend. And then as soon as you help them sponsor, so you should always be working as deep as possible in your organization, because that gets these people down here excited. They make more money, which gets everybody above them excited. And that's the way it works. Okay. You, I could do, I could spend an hour on working in depth. Are easily two hours working in depth, and it's very simple, by the way, to work in depth. When you when you're building the business right, when you select the right people, it makes your job so much easier because you never have to babysit these people. You have to help them in the beginning, but after that, they do it on their own. Selecting the people, you start working in depth, right? Uh, or, or you get them started quickly and efficiently. You start working in depth. Your numbers: five twenty-five, one twenty-five, six twenty-five. 3125. If you think about it for a second, guys and gals, you're being you're te you're being selected with who you choose and you're teaching all your people to be selective. Imagine going down five levels. You have almost, you know, 525, 125, 625, uh 3125. You add that up, that's close to 4,000 people. 
Imagine all those people having all those characteristics because you specifically look for those people. You helped, you helped your people find the five people with those characteristics. It's so forgiving when you're down on those three, fourth, fifth level. You can, you can screw up all over the place down on your fourth, fifth, sixth level because you have so many quality people down there because you picked them right. And that's why Don's business was able to grow from 170,000 to 1.4 million on basically on its own without him even there. That's what network marketing is supposed to do, but hardly ever does because nobody understands what we talk about today, literally. Does that answer your question? Sure. <laughs> and how long, how long does it take? I mean, if you want a number, it's hard to put a number on it. That's why we use two to five years. I mean, if you have massive credibility and influence with people, obviously you're going to get there quicker. I mean, if you work harder and you have a lot of credibility, you're going to get there even quicker. But for the average person who sticks with the system, right, does it the way we teach you, we, we teach you uh, if you stay consistent, and I hate to say talk to one person a day because it's not that's not necessary. I mean, if you talk to one person a day, if you ask one person a day to take a look, you will be successful in this business. You're probably looking at two to five years. But the reality of it is there's a lot simpler ways to do it. You know, the first thing I do when I sponsor someone is I send them a homework assignment, have them take their top 10 people that have most of those characteristics. And then we break down those top 10 and we look at maybe the top two or three to where they have the best relationship with, to where the timing is right. And then we help them get started there. And now some people are members of the NFL club, okay? No friends left. I mean, in that case, there's still ways to get around that sometimes. Sometimes there's not. But then we go to a plan B. And plan B is basically to teach people how to, see, this is a relationship business. I mean, anybody can do this, do that, and send them to their company website. Anybody can learn that. But it's about relationship. It's it's about un making people understand, all right, that you really care about them and you're going to help them own their life. And once you develop those bonded relationships, I mean, and you give people a simple system like we have, they tend to stick around. Not all of them are going to build a big business, but they tend to stick around. And when the timing is better for them, um, a, a lot of those people will come back and say, hey, I'm, re I'm ready to go, even if they don't start building a business in the very beginning. All right. So building building those relationships, that's 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 the key to the entire business. All right. Um, and if you you know, if you do it the right way, the way we teach you, the average the average person's probably looking. And what is an average person? You know, I don't know. I mean, you could that's it's a hard definition. There is no average person. I mean, God loves everybody the same. I'm just talking about from a network marketing standpoint. Um, you're you're probably looking at two to five years. What if it takes you seven? So what? Seven years is going to go by really, really quick. You know, I've seen people, I've seen people go five, I've seen people do, uh, get up to two, 3,000 people in, in a year. But they're usually people that have a lot of credibility and influence. They've been around a while and they're really hard workers. They, you know, they, they tend to do it full time instead of part time. Part time person, you're looking at probably two to five years sticking with the system. Why do you think people are afraid of earning large sums of money and are satisfied with a small amount of extra income from selling MLM products? Why do you think? Um, you know, that's the mind. The mind is a complicated thing. You know, I think you got fear of failure, obviously. Some some people were driven by fear of failure. I, I don't know. Um, people here from the United States, there's a guy by the name of. Uh, what's his name, Don? Kurt Kurt has a Sunday night show. Not, not Kurt Warner. No, he was, on, he was on the five yesterday. Oh, oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, there's a guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he has a, he has a Sunday TV show. It's like a news show. Da, da, Kurt Kurt Gowdy, I think. Is, no, it's not Kurt Gowdy. But anyway, it doesn't matter. He's driven by fear of failure. He loves fear of failure. When he's afraid of something, it makes him work even harder. Right. But there's Trey Gowdy. Trey Gowdy, that's his name. But there's other people who uh, fear of failure has stopped them in their tracks. You know, and uh, I, I don't know why that is, you know, and you don't want to be, uh, you know, if you want to be a psychologist, like study that stuff, you could probably, you know, figure that out. But if you want to build a network marketing business, don't worry about that. Just be very selective in who you choose. 
Look for the track record and the other characteristics. Then there's fear of success. You know, some people are afraid to succeed because with success, all right, um, comes responsibility. And with respons responsibility requires work. I mean, you know, so when you're successful, people are relying on you. They're looking for help. Some people, they just don't want to do that. You know, um, lack of confidence. You know, when I grew up, my stepdad, I could not do anything right for that guy. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick story how people and you, you, you guys and guys all, all know this kind of stuff. You, you've experienced or you've heard stories like this, but it didn't matter what I was a pretty good baseball player when I was young. Right. That was one. There was a lot of things I wasn't good at, but I was a pretty good baseball player. Right. And my stepdad was a pretty successful guy. He graduated from college. He was an all-American football player for Pitt. He played with Mike Ditka, the great football coach. I don't know some of you might know Mike Ditka. Um, he went on to become a lieutenant commander in the Navy. Um, really smart guy. I mean, unbelievable. He could do it all. All right. And but he grew up with a dad that basically like put him down all the time. How he became so, you know, so uh, the way he did is beyond me, but he carried that over into me. Like I couldn't do it. And plus I was his stepson. That might've had some parts of it, but like if I would hit a home run in my baseball game, right. And I would come home and I, I would want to make him proud of me. Like he was my dad, right. He was my dad. I'd want to make him proud of me. So I'd say, dad, I hit a home run. He would say stuff to me like, well, geez, I mean, you should have hit three home runs off that pitcher. He was terrible. Like, instead of like, you know, <laughs> saying great job, son, hit a home. That's great that you hit that home run. He would put me down, you know, no matter what I did, I couldn't, you know, if I would shovel the snow, I didn't shovel it deep enough or I didn't shovel it wide enough. I remember I was 40 years old. Okay. This was like 20 years ago. I already had all my house paid off, my cars paid off. I didn't have any debt, by the way, because of network marketing. Okay. And I'm out. That's back when I had a good back. I could actually sh do snow back in those days. I'm out there shoveling my sidewalk. And as I'm shoveling my sidewalk, I'm like remembering my stepdad telling me, you should shovel it wider. You should shovel it deeper. You're not doing a good enough job. This was ringing in my head. I'm 40 years old now, financially successful, right? And I'm still hearing my stepdad say these things to me that he did when I was a kid. I mean, a lot of, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people in situations like that to where their confidence has been affected by people when they were young, you know? And so, they get involved in network marketing. You teach them all the right things. They seem like they're going to do well. They have maybe a, you know some of those characteristics and they just don't go anywhere. It could be a lack of confidence. But I remember as I was shoveling that day, I, I said to myself, I caught myself. It was like a moment in my life. It was like one of those moments that changed your life. And I said to myself, you know what, Jeff, you're 40 years old. You own this house. My stepdad at that time had been dead for like five years. He wasn't even on the earth. And I was letting this guy control my life. It was ridiculous. It was all here. And that was a changing point because I really kind of realized what I was doing. I was sabotaging myself. And I was pretty successful at the time. So it just goes to show you, you know, the mind is a crazy. So there's a lot of reasons. Fear of failure, fear of success, lack of confidence. Um, you know, a, a lot of reasons why just be selective and you'll solve, you'll solve most of those problems. Okay. Trust and care. <laughs> yeah. And care about those people, you know, just because they can't do it now. I mean, people can change. They can, they usually don't. I mean, if, if you think you're going to make a living on betting the 1000 to one shots out at the racetrack, the horse track, you know, you're, you're probably being a little bit too naive, but if someone has a, a lot of the great characteristics, maybe they lack confidence and they're not doing the business right now. If you see them hanging around in the background and they're showing up at the seminars and they're, you know, Hey, one of my best distributors ever in my first company, he always used to sit in the back of the room. 
He never would say anything, but he showed up every single meeting. Back in those days, we used to have a, I'd rent out of this clubhouse and we'd have a meeting at clubhouse. He'd sit in the back, oh, nicest man, quiet man. He couldn't even look at you in the eye. Like when he talked to you, he had to put his head down, real shy kind of guy. Long story short, after about six months, we came up with this tool, all right, to help promote one of our products. And he said to himself, wow, I like that tool. I could probably do this business with that tool. He came up to me at the end. This is after six or eight months. It was a long time. And he said, and he said, hey, I like that tool. Do you think if, if I purchased that tool, I could do the business? And I said, yeah. And then he told me his story. And I said, yeah, based on that story, I think you could. And he goes, would you help me do it? And I said, of course, I would help you do it. And I ended up helping him. He never did anything. I mean, he, he bought a little bit of product each and every month, never sponsored one person. I helped him get off to a good start. All right. When he found that tool and he ended up you know, having like 5,000 people in his organization. So can people change? Absolutely. There's no question about it. I was, I was one of those people, you know, who, who changed, but as a rule, you don't want to try to persuade and convince people to change. Okay. Look, this is more of a finding the right kind of person business than a persuading or convincing. Look, make it easy on yourself, all right? Find the, and for those of you who have never gone through like the homework assignment that I send out to people that I personally sponsor, get in touch with me. I'll send it to you, all right? And that'll really help you narrow down who you're looking for, okay? Any other questions? Sure, <laughs> three last ones. <laughs> Three last ones. Okay. <laughs> Three last ones. <laughs> what to alter a person who wants specifics? An example, how much will he earn? Yeah, I mean, uh, what does he need to earn if you're. What's the question again, Adriana? What the answer? What to answer to a person who wants specifics? In example, how much will I, will he earn? Got it. Got it. Um, you know, as their sponsor, you know, find out what they want. Ask that question. You know, if time if time, money, and health wasn't a problem, you know, what would your life look like? Let them frame. Let them answer that for you, because not everybody wants the same thing. OK, not everybody wants a place down at the beach in a cabin and make fifty thousand dollars a month. Some people just want to spend more time with their kids. They want an extra two thousand dollars a month. All right. In order to be able to fly two or three times a year to visit their grandkids who live halfway across the country. All right. That's what they want. Find out what they want. And then as their sponsor, show them how they can get it. OK, remember when we went through the 525, 125? We went down three levels, right? And if everybody found their 10 friend customers, they were earning somewhere between two and $6,000 a month, depending upon, and, that, and, and the spread was because not everybody had their 10 friend customers. So if someone wants to earn, you know, three, three, $4,000 a month or whatever it is, take, take them through that. Show them what kind of organization they would need to build in order to achieve that kind of income. And it, once they understand it, then help them achieve it. That's your responsibility as their sponsor to help them achieve that. Let me see if there's anything else I want to say about that. Um, you know, just, yeah, just, just show them what they would have to do in order to make the kind of money that will allow them to do what they want. All right, help them set up a little game plan. And if you don't know how to do that, then contact your upline. And if they don't know how to do that, contact their upline. Go as far up in the upline until you can find someone who knows what they're doing. And if you can't find anybody, which is like, it's true. Sometimes you can't find anybody. I mean, even the people out there that are making a lot of money. I mean, uh, it's just an amazing thing. But then come to us. You know, when our community gets up and running and the app, it's going to be a, co a community and an app based on an ideal member. What, what do I mean by that? The people that are going to be joining our community and app are the people that you want to associate yourself with. Who are these people? People who want to own their life, time, money, and health, a time in their life um, that, uh, that they can they can do what they want with the people that they love most. Imagine, and it's going to start off probably small, you know, maybe 20 or 30 people, maybe 50 or 100. I don't know, but somewhere in there, it'll probably start off small. 
And then when people start coming and seeing all these like-minded people who actually care about your success, who are actually teaching people the right way to do network marketing and people that like 95% of you on this call are not in my organization. And yet if you need help, all you have to do is ask, you know, I mean, so many people feel lost in network marketing. They don't know where to turn to. They can turn to us. All right. And as we grow larger and larger, obviously, you know, if you have 10,000 people in the community in the app, it, it's harder to individualize, but that's okay because we're going to have all these webinars, everything that we've done in the past that is worthwhile, that we do in the future that is worthwhile. It's all going to be in there. It's all going to be in separate sections. All right. Yeah. Um, it'll be all these like-minded people who are going to be able to talk to each other within the community. And as certain people, let's say, for example, William goes out there and, and builds a, a business five levels deep. He has you know, a couple thousand people in his organization. He's doing really well. And he has his testimonial in there. Maybe he'll do a little video telling us how he did it. Imagine when there's like 300 videos like that of just you know an average person who didn't understand network marketing when they got into it. Maybe they were in a company where they weren't doing anything. They found, they found our community and our app. We taught them the right way. They went from someone who was not doing well at all to someone who was a success. And now you have five or 10 or 100 or 300 or 500 of these people. Imagine how easy it's going to be for you to sponsor your people who you introduce to the business because all of them are going to be sent in order to, to be able to like, you know, read the card, right? And to go through the first five chapters. That's where you're going to send them. You're going to send them to this community. So they're going to be able to go into the community, get educated, and then uh, peruse, you know, look around the community. And once they see what's in there, it's going to make your job of sponsoring people so much simpler because you're going to have people have these like awakening moments like, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. Like, I can do this. I just have to send them to this community. Were these all these people who want the same thing and are willing to help people achieve it? It's going to be something like you've never seen before in network marketing. It's going to it's going to revolutionize the industry, but more importantly, it's going to revolutionize your lives. It's going to help you own your life, time, money, and health. Anything else? Uh, is it possible for someone to understand everything after reading your uh, own your life book once? Um, not, not usually. I mean, unless you're, unless you're like Albert Einstein, you know, and, and even, <laughs> and even Albert Einstein, you know, said, how did he say it? Like, um, repetitions, the mother of learning and the father of action. I mean, most people need to be exposed to something multiple times before they really, truly get it, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, the answer to your question is um, most people, if they just go through the book one time, they probably won't get it. But, you know, if you if you get involved in the community, you get involved with the app, these things that are in the book are constantly reinforced. And remember, you have all these lovely people who want to own their life, time, money and health. They're being constantly, you know, uh, um, you know, the, these principles that are in the book are being reinforced in all kinds of different ways. So they're hearing them, whether they like it or not, and almost all of them will like it. So they show up to the community, they see a new video that we just did, or they hear William or or Monica, you know, talk about a success that they had last week, and they're they're constantly reminded of the things that they need to do. But really, you know, it's just not about reading the book once, even if you understand it, because it really takes most people, you know, anywhere from three to six months of being involved in network marketing, you know, in order to truly understand it. You don't need to understand all that stuff in the beginning. In the beginning, you just need to know how to do this, do that, and send them to your company website, you know, if you're going to sponsor them or send them to the community community or to the app if, the, if you already have an organization so they can understand the system. That's all you need to understand in the beginning, okay? But as times go by, you know, you have, eventually, you know, you have to learn about the, your company's products, right? I mean, how the compensation works. I mean, it's nice to be able to like say, hey, here's how you make the money in our company. I mean, you need to know that stuff. You just don't need to know it up front. that's all.
Okay. So the short answer to your question is no. I mean, you need to be involved about six months until you really understand it. And involved, I guess, that also participating in some kind of meetings like that, yes, the, the sticking up uh, to the community, to the sponsor, yes, very closely, working together. All that, the school of involvement, anything to do with network marketing, you know, attending Zooms like this, doing three-way calls with your sponsor, you know, watching Don when he does, you know, his his thing, um, uh, going to maybe, maybe going to a convention or a rally with your company, you know. Um, I mean, you don't, you don't need to go to rallies and conventions to learn how to build a business, but when you, when you go to a rally or convention with your company, you get to meet a lot of like-minded people in your company. I mean, it's fun. It's a lot of fun, you know? So just the school in involvement, anything to do with your network marketing business is what we're talking about. That's what we, that's what we mean by going back to school. Yeah. Great, great, great questions. Anything else? Yeah, the last question. Does doing MLM with the lifestyle approach mean showca show showcasing the cars or ho houses uh, you bought or showing you the exotic places where you spend your vacation? What does it mean, lifestyle approach, exactly? Yeah, I mean, it does, you know, it can mean that. I mean, some, some people, you know, they, they like seeing those things. You know, some people love traveling, you know, they love, uh, you know, they love the beach and stuff. So, I mean, that that can be meaningful to them. But I kind of answered this question earlier, if you think about it. I mean, find out what people want first. Isn't that the first step in the system? Find out what they want. Just ask that question. If time, money and health wasn't a problem, what would your life look like? Let them talk. They'll tell you and then just show them and help them get that. Right. That's that's all you need to do. Um, really, I mean, so in in most cases, you know, that's the answer to the question. <laughs> you don't have to be, you know, if you're talking big money and you're talking traveling all over the world and all these great for some people that is really meaningful and they love it. But you know what? For some people, it's a real turnoff. They don't want that stuff. I was talking to a guy the other day. He said, if I could make $500 a month, month in and month out, I would be happy as a lark. That's what this guy wanted. Well, why do I want to show him how to make $50,000 a month when he only wants to make 500? He's not going to listen to me. He's not interested. Ask people what they want and then help them get it. And they might upgrade. You know, Don talks about, you know, um, get involved, you know, expose them. Involve, expose, and then upgrade. You know, once someone's making five hundred dollars a month, they're getting a little taste. I mean, five hundred dollars a month for the average person on top of the income that they're making, a lot that that's like a lot of times that is life changing. An extra five hundred dollars a month. A lot of people don't think that, but you know, or a five hundred or a thousand dollars a month can make a tremendous difference. It can make the difference between someone going bankrupt and not going bankrupt. But once someone makes, you know, five hundred, a thousand dollars a month, especially if it's res the residual, you know, they're not working too hard. It's coming in month in and month out. Um, a lot of times they're thinking like, you know what? It'd be kind of nice to make two or three thousand a month. All right. And when they let you know that they're ready for that, then just show them how to do it and help them do it. You know, it, everybody's different. I mean, you've got to you got to find out what people want, what they really want. Right? But Jeff, you said yesterday very important thing about the goals. Write it down in the present tense. Right. Read it uh, every day. Yes. Not only think about the dreams, but also uh, write it down. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I haven't talked about this too much. It's kind of like one of those gems that got lost in the mix over the years. You know, it's like, but, and if, and if you guys want, want information on this, I'm, I'm glad to send it to you. But a friend of mine, very successful network marketing distributor, his name's Jordan Adler. He wrote a book called Beach Money. Okay. And in this, in this book, one of the chapters was about, he was really depressed at this time in his life. And um, so what he did one day, it was like this rainy, ugly day. He was depressed. He sat down and he just like wrote down on a piece of paper, 
what what he wanted. You know, got it out of his head and he put it on paper. And again, go back to that question. That's the easiest way to do it. If time, money, and health wasn't a problem for you, what would your life look like? And then just start writing. Don't, don't stop writing. Just keep on writing until you can't write anymore. And don't, you, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know what I mean? If something you wrote doesn't make sense, just scratch it out and just keep on writing. And then go back to the question. If time, if I had all the time in the world, what, what would I be doing? Spending more time with my grandchildren, the traveling. Where would you travel to? Well, I'd go here. Why would you do that? Just get it all out of your head and spill it on the paper and write fast. Okay? And just keep on writing. And if you, so anyway, that's what Jordan did. And then he, 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 he read a book, like telling him to do this, right? And then once he got it down on paper, he read it every day for, I don't know how long. I can't remember. I haven't read it in a while. Maybe it was like six months or something like that. Every day he would read it. And then I think he moved to another, to another, to another house. Excuse me. Then he moved to another house. And this was like seven years later or something like that. He, when he moved, he took that, what he wrote, he put it in a box and it never came out of the box until seven years later. He found it in the box when he moved into his new home and he got this piece. He had kind of forgot about it until he found it. And then he started reading it and I won't ruin it for you, but basically like every single thing that he said that he wanted, you know, all his dreams in that seven year period had come true. And I can tell you um, when you, It'll work for you just like it worked for Jordan. Um, but, and he didn't even look at it every single day. He just looked at it every six months because there's something about the way the subconscious mind works. And when you get it out of your head, you put it on paper and then you look at it every single day, all right? It becomes real. It's like, because it's in your mind, like everything that you're doing during the day, like if you see something, like if traveling is on your mind, traveling is real important to you. And you go to a store or, or, you know, a better example is like if you have a car, did you ever buy a car? Maybe it's a Honda or something. You have a Honda and you never noticed a lot of Hondas before. But now that you bought a Honda, you see Hondas everywhere. All right. It's the same thing. When you get it out of your head and on the paper and you look at it every day, everywhere you go, you see something that's related to your goal. And when it's related to your goal, you start thinking about your goal. And your mind goes to work automatically. You go to sleep and you dream. It formulates ways to achieve your goal. It's the way God made us, I guess. You know, it's just the way it is. So there's that gem that kind of got lost, you know. Um, uh, and if you want that chapter from Jordan, you can buy Beach Money. You can find it on Amazon or whatever if you want. Go ahead and buy it. it it's a worthwhile book, no doubt about it. Um but that particular chapter is worth its weight in gold. It will do things for your life that you could never even dream of. It's one of the key. It's one of the keys to the vault, no doubt about it. Yeah, great question, Adriana. Okay, so do you have any other question? Please uh, ask right now, Jeff. This is your turn. If not, we will close the meeting. Yep. So feel free. I got I got fifteen minutes. So far away. Yeah, so unmute yourself, please. Uh... Okay, mine is not actually a question, just uh, a comment on one of the suggestions Jeff gave. I think that was a few weeks, a few days back, or a week back, where he said we should put our goals down. Myself, I'm more of a digital person, so I use my device. I have this uh, notepad on my phone, so I can actually write my, my goals there and then pin it to my screen, or even set a notification that notifies me every maybe 30 minutes or a specific time of the day. So it comes up and it kind of reminds me of what to do or what I'm working towards. And it's, it's really been helpful. Like what you just mentioned uh, that um, Jordan Adler did. Uh, I think uh, there's one author that, uh, I think he named that um, the law of visual reality. You know, having a picture of what you want and then putting it somewhere, maybe in writing or something. And it really worked for me recently ago i said i've just achieved it so yeah thanks for that and i really love the session learned a lot oh thank you timothy you're, you're awesome man you always contribute just so that you know, you know timothy and i we go back and forth pretty regular on facebook messenger 
you know, he's, he's always involved. You know, he walks his talk. You teach, he's a perfect example of being selective. You find fine Timothy's in your business and you, you're going to own your life in two to five years. No question about it. He not only, he not only like listens, but he actually applies things and then he contributes and stuff. And not that, you know, some people are shy. I understand that. If you don't want to talk, that's, that's fine. Remember that guy in the back of the room, right? He never talked and he built a huge, you don't have to be like that. You can be who you are and you can be as successful as anybody, anybody in this business. The if best just, way to be yeah, who, just, you just be who you are. You know? And, you know, there's a lot of distractions, you know, what Timothy said right there, there's, we're distracted by so many things in our life. There's so many things going on that if you don't constantly remind yourself of the things that are important to you, all right, then what happens is what are you focusing on? You're focusing on all the distractions in your life. And remember, you get what you focus on. So if you're constantly exposed to distractions and all these crazy things that life throws our way, that's what you're going to get. And people wonder why you, you hear them say like, why, you know, why does this always happen to me? Why are these crazy? It doesn't. It's you know why? It's because that's what's going into your head. That's really the reality of it. That you get what you focus on. You become what you think about all day. Make a note of this. OK, um, go to YouTube and do a search or contact me and I'll send it to you. Um, um, Earl Nightingale. Um, the, uh, what's it called? A law of attraction. Uh, well, well, he does a lot of things, but one, he, he has a 30 minute talk. You can find, um, the seek, the secret, um, just contact great, me. Say, just the greatest uh, secret, the greatest, the greatest secret. Yeah. And he talks about how you become what you think about all day long. Unbelievable. I mean, he puts it in a way where it's like, it hits you right here, not only here, but it hits you right here. And it'll help you focus. I I keep things in front of me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me see. Let's see if I can find it here real quick. Oh. Oh, I'll just, I'll just I'll just read it to you. I can't remember where it is, but like, and I always have it handy. You got to keep this stuff handy. It doesn't matter if you hear me say it when you go back to your life, and then you don't do it for yourself. It's not going to work for you. Remember, be selective with your people. Like, you know, the, look look at Timothy. He's a perfect example. You teach him something, he puts it on his phone, he looks at it every day. That's what you're looking for. Okay. Here's I, I have these, I have this all over my house. I have it in my bathroom, in my in, in my car. I have I have a clubhouse out back. I have it out there. I have it sitting next to me here on in, in the living room next to me over here. I have another copy of this. I try to look at it before I go to bed. I try to look at it when I wake up, all right, because it constantly reminds me. And, and it might not be the same things for you. Maybe other things are more important to you, but I'll just re I'll read them to you and I'll give you the short, you know, like what it means to me. OK, the first thing is baby steps like you don't have to do. You know, if you if you read five minutes a day. Multiply that times 365 days in a year. What is that? That's like, someone do the math. What's five times 365? Anybody? I don't have my calculator here with me. What's time? What? Hold on. Five times 365. That's 1,825 minutes divided by 60 minutes. If you read five minutes a day, do you realize that's 30 hours? of reading a year. Do you know how long it takes to read the average book? Three hours. So that means you read 10 book, five minutes a day, you read 10 books a year. And you know, like psychologists say, if you read three books in a particular subject, you know more about that particular subject than 99% of the people in the world. So can you make progress with five minutes a day? What if you're yeah. five minutes? A day? Yeah, of course you can. But most people they don't think like that. That's why you got to remind yourself. That's what baby steps kind of remind me of. You don't need like to do these massive amount of things every day. You know, you hear people take massive action. Hey, that might be fine if you want to take massive action. How about five minutes of action? How's that? <laughs> Can you do that? How about, the, how about the slower, the faster you said? Yes. <laughs> how about two minutes of action, right? I mean, 
you know, if you don't feel, we hardly ever feel like getting started, right? Unless it's something fun. But once you get going, it's like, why, why, why was it so hard to get started? It's almost always like that. You know, so, you know, a little trick that I use, a little baby step trick. If I don't feel like doing something, which is a lot of times, I mean, I'm no different than anybody else. All right. Uh, if I don't feel like doing something, but I know it needs to be done, or I know I need to do it because of whatever, I have a deadline or whatever, I'll just do this. I'll go, um, Alexa, set alarm in two minutes. Okay, so Alexa, set alarm in two minutes. All right. Anyway, my Alexa is going off on the other side of the room. But anyway, so what I'll do in that two minutes is like whatever I don't feel like starting. I mean, anybody can do something for two minutes, right? I mean, if you can't do that, then you might as well hang it up. <laughs> you're just, you know, you're just not going to make, I mean, so, but, so I'll take two minutes and I'll start, like, maybe I have to read something. I'll just start reading it. And usually within like 30 seconds or a minute or within two minutes, it's like, I'm okay. I feel like keep it on going. But I make a promise to myself when that alarm rings, if I still don't feel like doing it, and it's lo as long as it's not something that's mandatory, I have to get done. I will honor my promise to myself and I will stop. See, you have to keep your promises to yourself, folks. You know, you might be able to fool the people on the Zoom here today and all that. But you know what? You cannot fool yourself. If you don't honor your own promises, if you don't keep your own promises, you're doomed. That's it. And I don't care what they are. Don't make promises to yourself if you can't keep it. If you want to get five things done in one day and you know you're not going to be able to do that, all right, but don't write five things, right? If you think you can get two of the five, put the two down and do your best to get those two done. You know, because if you do five and you promise yourself you're going to do five and then you don't, eventually you start not trusting yourself. That's what happens. We can't fool ourselves. So that's baby steps. Another thing is do one thing at a time, do it right and finish it. I tend to be a scatterbrain. I tend to be a little bit ADD. This really helps me. So whatever I do, and it's, it, this is a hard one for me sometimes, I take that one thing, I, I do my very best to focus on it, that one thing at a time, I forget about the rest of the stuff, all right, I, I do it the best that I can, do one thing at a time, do it right, and I finish it if I can't. If I can't finish it, I will mark it. Alexa, stop. I will mark it off. Here's an example, like I'm going through... Um, some videos right now where are they i have these videos that i'm going through because i have to get through these but sometimes these videos are like an hour long and i might get to like 32 minutes in the video well so i i take the time to write down here's the video here's the name of it start at the 32 mark because i might not be able to finish it because maybe i need to feed my cats right so i need to leave and do, do whatever i need to do but i don't want to forget i don't want to have to watch the whole video over again when I was younger, I wouldn't have taken the time to write down the video. I'm at the 32 minute mark. You got to you got to be organized. Write down what you're doing, okay? And then you can always come back to that. Do one thing at a time, do it right and finish it. So if I only got through 32 minutes of that 60 minute video, then later on that evening, I'll come back and I'll finish up that video. Now, sometimes I must admit, I don't I don't do it like I promised myself I'm going to do it, but most of the time I do. I'd say 90% of the time. There's nobody perfect. I mean, we're all just a bunch of humans, okay? Remember that. You don't have to be perfect. And that 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 leads me to the next thing. Remember, progress, not perfection. Remember when I told you how to write out the things that you want and don't stop writing? Because if you stop writing, you lose the momentum. Like, don't stop writing. Just like if it's something silly that you wrote down, don't worry about it. Just keep on writing, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. You just need you just need to do it. Okay. I used to think I had to get everything right. Oh, I forgot to put the eye on top of the the dot on top of the eye. I'd go back and put the dot on top of the eye. It's like it was ridiculous. And then finally, <laughs> like one day, you know, I woke up and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm driving myself out of my mind. And now I never do that. You know, I realized it was like, you know, when I was shoveling the the, the I was shoveling the sidewalk, you know, and I'm hearing my my dad who had been dead. And by the way, we made, we, we became buddies before he died. Okay. You know, so I, I love my dad, even though we went through a lot of problems, but he really did hold me back with these limit, you know, by being the way he was when I was young and you got to get this stuff. You got to throw this stuff out of your mind. 
figure out a way to do it. I don't, like I said, I don't have all the answers to do it. Look into it, get, read a book, ask questions or whatever, figure out ways to get out of your own way. Okay. You have to, and that's your responsibility, but ask for help if you need help. And if that person can't help you ask for help, there's lots of people out there willing to help. We're willing to help. Okay. Um, so here's another one. I love this one. Okay. You don't have to get it right. You just have to get it moving. Kind of goes along with the last one, right? Progress, not perfection. Just get it rolling. Once you get it, set your alarm for two minutes or five minutes or one minute and just get it rolling. And at the end, if you, if you don't feel like going anymore, then stop, honor your promise. But if you do, then keep on going. And a lot of times I did that two nights ago. I did not feel like I had a bunch of things I had to get done. It wasn't fun stuff at all. Most of the stuff I do is fun, but this was not fun. All right. But I had to get it done. All right. Impossible. And so, I, so I just sat down and what I do there, I, 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 I did, I used 15 minute increments. Okay. And that you, you might use five minutes. It doesn't matter, but I use 15. So I sat down, I grabbed the book, you know, the things that I was supposed to do. And I just, I said, you know, Alexa, set alarm in 15 minutes. Okay. It set alarm. And then I just started reading within five minutes. I was like, Hey, this isn't all that bad. You know, and I, I was doing my stuff. And then as I was doing it, I, I, a couple ideas came to me that I knew would be able to help a lot of you guys as I was going through it. And now I started getting excited. I'm like, Oh my gosh. So I started out hating this. And within 15 minutes, I was on a roll. I ended up, I think I started like 10 o'clock at night. It was kind of late. I, I got done at three o'clock in the morning. I got five hours of work done. And I'd say 90% of those five hours, I was having a blast. And it was only because I kept this in front. You know, I keep these things in front of me because I, to the degree that I don't look at it, to that degree, distractions take over my life. And it'll be the same thing for you. And you know it. <laughs> you, you all know what I'm saying is true, you know? So you got to keep it in front of you. That's the key. You don't have to get it right. You just have to get it moving. <laughs> so I keep them in front of me. And I think, you know, if God is for you, who can be against you? You know, I, I love the Lord. And he says, he, you know, he, he, and he, the God can't lie. At least my God can't lie. He tells me he loves me. He wants the best for me. He wants the best for you. So I just hand it over to him. I say, God, be with me. I don't feel like doing this. Just be by my side and let me figure it out. And like, inevitably, it, it, it works. Now, I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm just telling you what works. If that kind of stuff doesn't make sense to you, then figure out what works for you. That's the key. We don't all like tapioca pudding, right? Like some people hate it. Some people love it. We're all different. These are just principles. Okay, so if there is uh, another question, uh, thank you very much, all of you, for today, for your time, for sharing, Jeff, all that knowledge you have. And I invite you uh, next month for the meeting Zoom with Jeff. It will be 22nd of February. The same time, the same link. So look at this, schedule the meeting in your agendas. <laughs> And welcome here, of course. Uh, the second uh, Wednesday of each month, we have Zoom meetings with Don. So the next Zoom meeting with Don will be uh, February fifteenth. The same time, the same, uh, the same uh, link. So thank you once again, Jeff. I appreciate very, very much for your time. Thank you once again for all of you. See you yeah. next time. This is well. bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye. Love you all. Take care. Love you, sis. Bye. bye, Thank, bye. You. Thank you. All right. Bye, bye for now. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>